Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be painting up Lord Screech, the Vermin King. He's from uh, Warhammer, Age of Sigmar, and he's kind of the uh, faction leader for the little rat boys, the Skaven. I'm going to be using the airbrush to do a lot of the pre-shading, kind of like a form of slap chop, except we're just going to be using color rather than grays and blacks. And then we'll come over the top of that with just some contrast paints to tint all of our pre-shading. And then just a simple oil wash with some edge highlighting and a little bit of glazing. So let's get started. Okay, we have the model primed in Chaos Black and I'm gonna come in with the Ultra Airbrush and lay down a base coat of some purple. And for that, I'll be using Zeros Purple by Citadel. I have the Ultra around 20, 25 PSI with about six drops of paint to 10 drops of thinner. And we just go, wanna go around and get a nice solid base coat. The next color I came in with was Barrack Nar Burgundy by Citadel and I'm going to be doing kind of a zenithal over the top of the model. I want to build up kind of the tone and values all over the model with each of these steps through the airbrush and so in doing so with that we're not going to be shooting up from underneath the model as I want to keep the deepest recesses and shadows this kind of nice deep purple and uh, burgundy color. So it's a lot of work in the way around the model, um, angling the brush in such a way where we're only catching raised areas and leaving those shadow areas nice and dark. This is kind of what I'm going for. With each uh, new application, I want the color showing through and the previous colors visible in the darkest recesses. The next color I'm going to be using is Tuscor Fur by Citadel. And the paint's going to be a little bit thinned out here, and I'm going to be covering over the burgundy and the purple, while also kind of building up this color and the brightness in certain areas, mostly the raised areas. Um, going through in this thin coverage here will still allow us to see the previous colors through, and we're still going to leave those uh, deep recesses nice and dark. For areas that I want brighter, up on like the fur, tops of his knees and muscles, um, I'll just focus the paint there and give it a few more layers with the airbrush. With the Tuscor fur laid down, I'm going to come in now with some Ratkin Flesh by Citadel. And we'll just kind of be repeating the same process we've done with the previous two colors. Focusing up to the highest areas um, while still giving most of the coverage throughout the entire model. I do quite enjoy using uh, thin down paints through the airbrush. Um, that way it just gives me the option to um, kind of correct any mistakes I make and that way when I just lay, lay one thin layer down um, I'm able to um, build it up if I feel like I need more and that way I never go too strong too early and then have to backtrack and repeat the previous steps. This will also be the uh, last highlight color for the fur. Um, any other of the next colors I'm just going to be focusing those on the skin. And as for the horns, they'll be getting the same treatment as the rest of the model, just applying each new color um, thin over the previous ones, leaving some of that showing, and keeping the darkest colors in the recesses still visible. Now to add the final color to the skin, I decided to go with Ungore Flesh by Citadel, and with this color we're just going to be focusing mostly on these highest raised areas of the model. I will be doing really thin layers over all the flesh, but generally focusing on those higher parts to get the color um, bright as we can. Now that I have all my colors down, um, I just want to highlight them. And to do that, I'm going to be using Transparent White by Createx. If you don't have a transparent paint, um, you can just take some white ink, thin that through the airbrush. I've also just used regular, you know, White Scar or Althuan Gray Citadel paint, just really thin down to get that transparent look. And we just want to work our way around the model, focusing that paint up to the highest points. Since it is transparent, we are going to be getting that white, but we'll still be um, showing previous colors underneath.
once I have all that white down, I'm going to come in now and bring the color back. And to do that, we're just going to be pushing contrast paints through the airbrush to kind of tint all the areas that we've uh, prepped. And to do that, I'll be using Gilliman Flesh for the skin. And I just have this thinned down, probably like a 2 to 1 thinner to paint in the airbrush. Uh, 20 to 25 PSI. And I'm just going to go around the uh, model, get in a nice light coverage of this. Usually don't want to spend on there too long, as I don't want to darken it up too much. After I finished the skin, I came in and tinted the uh, fur. I did Sago Brown, and I kind of regret using this color. It's a little too opaque, meaning um, not a lot of transparency. So the coverage is uh, so thick, I kind of took away a little bit of the previous work I did with the pre-shading. Um, but in the end, it, it turned out okay. And then when it comes to the horns, I came in with some Basilicum on Grey by Citadel, and I did thin this out quite a bit. If I just put it in the uh, airbrush without doing much thinning, I would kind of had the same issue I did with the fur, and I would lose a lot of the uh, pre-shading I did beforehand. After I had the airbrush work done, it was time to bring out the paintbrush, and I wanted to start with the armor, so I used Exhaust Manifold by Vallejo and Turquoise Blue Ink by Daler Rowney. I just mixed those together 50-50, and I wanted to kind of a bluish, kind of gray armor color, and just took my time working around the model covering all that. There are some really um, tight spots in his back along the fur. So you just want to make sure you're careful not to get any paint. And if you do make any mistakes, you can always go back in and just touch them up. Once I had all the armor done, I then came in and wanted to base all the metallic parts. And for that, I'm going to be using Decay Metal by Scale 75. Just an excellent metallic paint, really great coverage as well. You usually only need one pass to get the coverage. I'll be using that on like the uh, bells on his horns, the metal links on the staff and the trim around his armor as well. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with the blades, but I decided to take some uh, emerald ink and then just mix that in with some exhaust manifold and get a nice kind of green emerald color um, based over on the blades for now. I then came in um, on the staff, just use a little bit of Alphon Gray and do some pre-highlighting on the uh, wraps. That way when we lay the contrast paint over, we'll get some um, easy highlights. The next color I came in with was Peridot Alchemy by Scale 75, and I just used this to layer over all the areas that I based with the K metal. And then as I went through and did the trim, any areas that I made mistakes or had any spillover, I still had that previous mix made up and I was just able to touch up any mistakes real quick. After that, I quickly came in with some Sigwald Burgundy and just used that to cover the wraps on the staff and I just went over the tassel as well. The next color, um, to do the bells, I came in with some Screaming Bell by Citadel and just used that to layer over the top of the decayed metal. After I had the bells done, I decided to stay around the horns and do all the leather straps. And for those, I'm going to be using Dumbo Brown. And I definitely took my time here, as I didn't want to have any spillover onto the horns, because that would be a little bit of a pain um, to touch up. For the next color, I came in with some Iron Rack Skin by Citadel. And I'm using this to put a base color over all the bone on the model including the skulls. He has some bones showing through his face. There's also some on his hand, and one of the weapons he's holding also has some bone on it. So I just made sure I got coverage on all those. Then to cover all the uh, links in his armor, I just used a silver color by Vallejo. And you can use really any silver metallic that you'd like. Then when it came to uh, his loincloth here, I came in with some Alphon Grey and just did some edge highlighting on the edges here. 
I'm gonna be doing something similar I did to the wraps on the staff there. Just doing a pre-highlight and laying a contrast paint over the top of that. Then the contrast paint I'll use for the uh, loincloth is Agaros Dunes by Citadel. And I'll also use this for the braids um, coming out from his underneath his chin as well. The next step I did was take some black by Windsor & Newton. And this is an oil paint. And I'm just going to use this to do some uh, recess shading in all the armor. I'll also take it and use it around the Peridot Alchemy parts on the model like on the staff, and that's just to get some nice shading in there and give it a little bit of a warm look. It's also really great for filling in any of the uh, markings and details on the armor, as well as the uh, links here. I'm then going to move on and do an oil wash over the fur, and for that I used four parts violet, two parts raw umber, and then one part black. I uh, probably could have used a bigger brush to do this and get over one pass, but I'm not too bothered by just taking my time and filling in all these recesses. And I just took this and went over the entirety of the fur to get a nice coverage in there, and get all the recesses filled in with that oil. As that was drying on the fur, I came in to do the skin, and for that, it's four parts magenta, one part violet, and then one part raw umber. Kind of following the uh, same process as the fur, using a small brush, and just working it in all over the flesh and uh, making sure I hit all those recesses. I thinned it down quite a bit as I don't want it really staining the skin. I didn't come in and do a, like a satin varnish over the top or anything like that, which is why I just uh, am using the oils in such a thin manner, just so I don't have so much staining over all the other surfaces. And when I start pulling it off, I'm able to get all that color back. And as we are using the makeup sponges, you just want to remember not to push down too hard. If you do, you could come through and uh, pull off all the layers of your paint. And that's just a real headache and pain to kind of have to deal with. So just remember to be delicate. Um, if you want, you can dab it in a little bit of white spirit and just lightly rub over the top and remove that oil. I keep a couple dishes uh, next to me. If I ever go too hard and pull off too much, I can just go back in with that oil and reapply and kind of work it to the desired um, effect that I want. As for the little uh, spikes here on his tail, I decided to go back and use the Iron Rack Skin by Citadel. Same paint I used for the bone. Um, I also decided to use that for the uh, his claws as well as his teeth too. Uh, took me a couple layers on some of the spots, as this paint can be a little inconsistent uh, with its coverage. After that, I'm going to move on to the fur, and I came in with some Dumble Brown, and I turned that into a glaze, and just started picking up some more of the uh, pronounced hairs all over the fur, and just did a simple edge highlight dragging the brush over the top. I just try to end all my brush strokes down at the tip, and that's where we'll be depositing most of the color. After that, I then uh, stayed with the Doombo Brown on the brush and just moved on to edge highlighting the horns. This model, the entire model has a lot of nice raised and pronounced areas, making it really easy to edge highlight. We're going to continue with the fur and we're going to step up our next color. We're going to be going to Tuscore Fur and this is going to be in a glaze. And I'm just going to be focusing this more towards the tips of all the fur. And since it's in a glaze, we're going to go over the, some of the Doombo Brown and just let that end at the end at the tips. And that way it should blend in pretty nice to the Doombo since we're still using it in a glaze. Then I'm going to take that same uh, paint that I have on the brush and go up to the horns and just do a spot highlight on all the most raised areas on there. Uh, and then for the final color on the fur, I'm going to be using some Ratkin Flesh again. This will also be in a glaze. And I'm focusing this just at the very tips, kind of dragging it over the Tuscor fur and just doing more of like a spot highlight at the very tips of the fur. And just with all the other previous colors, there is no um, plan to this, you could say. It's more random, just picking out random hairs that are um, more pronounced. 
Moving on to the flesh, I went in with some flayed one flesh in a glaze, and I'm focusing that, you know, areas like the tops of the knees there, on the knuckles on his hands. The face is where I'm just going to spend most of the time with this, um, pushing most of that color up to the most raised areas. I'll also come in and mix some flayed one in with some pallid witch flesh, and then I'll use that to get even smaller highlights, leading up to a full spot highlight with pure pallid witch. The next color I came in with was Space Wolves Gray, and that's a contrast paint by Citadel. And I just used that to do one layer over all the spikes on his tail, his teeth, and his claws. The next step I did was move on to the uh, weapon, and I wanted to get the warp stone done. So I'm using Althuan Gray to base those, and then I'll just take some white scar to highlight the edges of those stones there. At the same time I had the white scar out, I just decided to thin that down to almost like a wash consistency and just fill in those cracks around the blade. Normally I would use an oil paint, but since I already had the paint out, it was pretty simple just to thin it down and drag it over the edges. After that I came back with the exhaust manifold by Vallejo and I just used that to do some touch-up work around all the cracks where some of that white spilled over. I then came in with Karandras Green by Citadel and just used that for the warp stone. I found that using this paint does the job on its own. You don't need to come in with any other colors after to do any highlight or shading. Just one simple uh, coat of this contrast paint does the job. Really great paint for warp stone. Then for the cracks around the stones, I just came in with some fluorescent green ink by uh, Daily Rowney. Very simple step, just go over the cracks with that. After the warp stone was done, I realized I hadn't shaded um, his loincloth or these braids here, so I just came out with the violet raw umber mix and hit the braids in the loincloth. I then came in with a 50-50 mix of Iron Rack Skin and Space Wolves Gray and just used that to highlight all the spikes on his tail as well as his claws and teeth. After that I came in with some Stormhost Silver by Citadel. Just used that to do some quick highlighting on the little links there in his armor as well as doing the edges of the blades. Moving on to his eyes, I came in and based that with Corn Red by Citadel. Always helps to just take a breath and then hold it. Put your fingers as far as you can up on the brush, and that'll give you plenty of control. For the next layer color over the eyes, I came in with some Wild Rider Red. Same process too. Then finally, come in with some Dorn Yellow, and we just do a nice spot highlight. Then to finish off the model, just the last thing to do was to paint his feet and I was going to do those the same as I did his claws and teeth. Just use the iron rack skin, um, layer over that with Space Wolves Gray. I'd use probably two coats of the Space Wolves to get the coverage I wanted. And then once that's all done, I just come in with the mix of iron rack and Space Wolves Gray and just do a simple edge highlight over the top of the claws. And with that, I'm going to stop here and uh, call the model complete. I'll say using the airbrush for pre-shading, along with the oil wash, really just cuts down on time and also uh, jumps up the quality as well. It's just little effort for great results, something I highly recommend. As always, I'll have the products I used linked in the description of the video. And until the next one, take care, be happy, bye-bye.